Will Smith, uh, oh, yeah, Will Smith, um, uh, Shia LaBeouf throwing a riot, a whole bunch of robots going crazy. Well, it's one of my favorite movies, uh, not just because Will Smith, my favorite actor, because it was the first movie I ever watched that showed me a real, like a somewhat real depiction of an artificial intelligence. Like this idea that humans could create something born of technology that seems human, but is very distinct. Uh, and it's not just me, media, cinema, they're all enamored by the idea of an artificial intelligence. Uh, the idea that like, an AI could somehow rise and surpass humans. Uh, you guys know this guy, Ultron from, uh, from the Avengers? I think, I think this guy epitomizes the way that we look at artificial intelligence. The idea that like, we're going to create some kind of artificial being with personality very similar to a human, and yet, and yet he's going to be so different. Uh, but because of depictions like Ultron, people also think that AI is something that doesn't exist yet. And that's the question I'm going to ask. You know, d d does AI exist yet? Well, though, you're not going to, on your, on your drive home, you're not going to drive by Ultron. I can bet that each and every single one of you today has interacted with an artificial intelligence and you didn't even know about it. See, artificial intelligence doesn't just exist today, but its modern incarnation has existed for over a decade. And, it's in every sing and it exists every single day in your life. And if you don't believe me, I'm about to prove it to you. Today, did you Google anything? Maybe when you're on your way to the PAC or you know, after you go, you're gonna find a place to go to dinner. Well, if you have, then there's a good chance that you interacted with an AI, an AI called RankBrain. Uh, RankBrain is Google's artificial intelligence that basically goes through a whole bunch of user profiles, right? And it learns what makes people similar and what makes them different. So that way, when you put in an order for something, it'll, it'll tell, or when you put in a search, it will tell you what you want, not just on what you typed in, but also because it knows who you are, and its intent is gained from there. Did you read the news by chance? Well, if so, there's a good chance that your, the, red, the article that you read was not written by a person, rather it was written by a robot. The Associated Press releases about 3,000 quarterly reports, and not one of them is, read, or is written by a human. They're all written by an AI called Wordsmith that takes raw data, goes to a formula, and then puts out a whole bunch of paragraphs about it. Same thing with Fox Sports. For baseball, what they do is they take raw, uh, raw data and give short post-game updates in the, form of, in the form of tiny little paragraphs and sentences. And if you ever do fantasy football, you'll know that Yahoo Sports, you're probably wondering, like, who, who at Yahoo has time to write me this? Well, it's not. You've been lied to. It was a robot who wrote it all this time. So then you're probably wondering, okay, so if it's not this, you know, Ultron-esque uh, artificial intelligence, then what is artificial intelligence? So in order to get to what artificial intelligence is, what AI is, you have to know what intelligence is itself. So psychologists, uh, computer scientists, they tend to think of it as uh, pattern recognition. The smarter you are, the better you'll be able to recognize patterns. For example, something that we would consider dumb, like an ant, will keep bumping into a mirror, right? It, it'll, it doesn't know where it's going, and it'll keep bumping, and it'll keep bumping until it dies. It's not capable of realizing that if I go into this, if I go into this mirror, like, I'm not gonna be able to move forward. Uh, then let's take a slightly smarter animal, like a dolphin. A dolphin, if you put a mirror in like, the ocean, it might swim towards it thinking it's another dolphin, and it'll bump against it and realize, oh, I recognize that this object is not another dolphin, and I'll go swim away. But human, we're the most intelligent of all creatures. We don't even need to bump into a mirror to know that, okay, it's a mirror, we're not gonna bump into it. So then, artificial intelligence basically is a computer program that's capable of recognizing patterns. What it does is, it runs the code, it gets a result, and then it uses that result to affect its own code. It rewrites its own algorithms, it reteaches itself. So with this, we have a whole capabilities, a whole bunch of possibilities about AI, not just limited to fantasy sports. Uh, high speed trading, uh, high speed, uh, speed trading form, firms like Citadel and Adia use artificial intelligence, it's core to their trading platform. What they do is they have an AI look at how the market has been doing over the past few months, and then we'll, and then we'll find a prediction for the, next, uh, for the next few months, and then we'll act exclusively on that. There's very little human input in Citadel. They would rather hire a PhD in computer, alg in computer algorithms than they would someone with an MBA. Tesla, your new favorite car company, also is a heavy user of machine learning, a derivative of artificial intelligence. Each Tesla car is lined up with chock full of sensors that help determine not just the location of your car, but the location of other cars and where they were before. Then, the machine learning algorithm then determines not just where the car is, but where it will be in the next few seconds, which allows it to determine the location of cars in the future 
and then it pretty much predict a crash before it even happens. So basically, artificial intelligence, its utility to us is, as humans is it automizes things. Why would I drive a car when I can have a car drive itself for me? Why would I hire brokers when I can just have a computer make thousands of trades in one second? So ultimately, automation has major benefits, like it's easier, it's cheaper, it's faster. But with automation, you lose something very crucial, you lose control. And as we give artificial intelligence bigger and bigger tasks, we sacrifice things that are getting more and more important. In fact, one day, an artificial intelligence will have to choose between life and death. Because as we keep on giving it more and more important tasks, we then put our own safety, our lives, at risk. Let me give you an example. Uh, so one day, I believe, we're going to have a fully automated transportation system. All cars are going to be part of some kind of car internet. And they're going to be able to interact with each other, same way, user profile, and you won't have to do any driving. So let's take you to that year. Let's say in 2035. So I'm going to introduce you to car one. Car one has one mother. She's a soccer mom. She's taking care of her youngest child, who's a toddler. They're both in the back seat, and they're just on their way to, they're on their way to school. And in the other car, we have one C-suite executive at a very major pharmaceutical company. And what's happening is these two cars are going opposite directions, and all of a sudden, due to some unknown error, there is some kind of crazy malfunction. And now these cars are headed on, on a, are going in on a head-on collision. So now you're probably asking yourself, all right, what can the computer system do to fix it? So the computer system realizes this is too late, and then runs a million calculations and realizes that there's only, there's, there's only one way, there, you can only save two of the three lives. So that means either the toddler, the executive, or the mother dies. So in this case, we have a real dilemma. We have no idea, well, the computer has no idea how to calculate or how to justify the taking of one's life over the, over the lives of others. Well, that's not entirely true. Computer scientists are trying to find a way or trying to find multiple ways in which that we can derive a solution to this problem. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. How can you create a formula? Can you program morality into a computer? So there are two, there are two measures that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the first one is called, well, I dub it the fiscal measure. The idea that we're going to weigh each person's life based on the net impact they have on society. So for example, that C-suite executive, if we say that he is to die, then what is the net impact on the rest of the world, on the rest of uh, the economy? Well, when any normal uh, com company Ex, uh, experiences some kind of shift in management, especially executive level, their stocks are going to plummet. Uh, so imagine if their C-suite executive, their CEO, dies. Companies would, uh, investors would back out, companies would lose millions of dollars in infrastructure, and as a result, the company may have to lay off hundreds, if not thousands of people. Compare that to, say, the death of a toddler. A toddler doesn't employ anyone, doesn't contribute to the job force, their death, as unfortunate as it would be, would be much less impactful than the death of the executive. So if we were to implement this method, what would happen is thousands of lives, or not thousands of lives, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars possibly, would be saved. And we wouldn't even know about it. Uh, the, 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 the model does ignore certain things, though. Uh, for example, it ignores potential. Um, the idea that a child may be worth later, later on in the future, however, we can't recognize that immediately. But there's also another fatal flaw with this. The idea that, well, if you're influential, it's more likely it's because you're wealthy. And what happens is when you put, the, when you put this method in, wealthy people are going to be kind of getting their privilege extended. Before, they just got to drive nicer cars, probably more safer cars, but now, with an AI guiding the system using this protocol, they're pretty much immune to car accidents. And what's even worse is poor people are now facing an even greater amount of car accidents. So then there's the other measure, the social measure, the societal measure. Uh, many people in philosophy dictate that we, our morals are determined by society. So if we're going to create a moral machine, we should have society determine it. So the people should decide who lives and who dies. So you might be wondering, how can you do this? You can't crowdsource that much information. Uh, it's such a small, it's such, a, it's such an infinitesimal time. So what we do is, it's an artificial intelligence. We teach it. Uh, what we do is we collect a whole bunch of information, uh, be it a census. We kind of get some kind of site together, and we learn from humans' morals. We learn from how they behave, and we learn at the way that they treat each other. And then from that, we take the mean of all their answers. We collapse that, 
and we figure out, okay, this is the, this is the outcome that would leave the least amount of people unhappy. And in that case, most people would say, uh, according, according, to this one, uh, according to this one program uh, by MIT called uh, uh, The Moral Machine, what they did is they ran hundreds of simulations uh, like this. So you can actually participate this in right now if you want. Um, you have to choose between who lives and who dies. And they found out that children are the least likely to die and executives and criminals are more likely to die. So what happens is we have a quote unquote socially optimal scenario, but is it really socially optimal? The issue with this is inherent within society itself, that we as a society are flawed. The fact that we have our own biases, and not only that, how is this going to scale? The views of society within one state, be it Texas, is very different than the views of one state, be it New York. And then when you scale it to a national level or an international level, you're going to have major disputes in how, who is going to determine what kind of AI it is. You know, is it going to be from New York? Is it going to be from Texas? Whose morals are we instilling within the robot itself? So ultimately what I want to get across here is the fact that no matter which method we use, no matter which computer algorithm we're smart enough to generate, it will fail. Uh, we will always be disappointed with our results, not based on, not because we're not good enough technologists, but because the idea of what we're doing itself is flawed. In essence, we cannot outsource humanity. We can't, we can't let go of the part which makes us human. When we, when, we, when we automize characteristics, we're doing things because they're too easy for us. But for things that are too difficult, like making decisions like these, we can never allow ourselves the opportunity to let this go. Now, I'm not trying to say that we should halt production of any artificial intelligence engines. AI, to me, still is the most fascinating field there is uh, in computer science, and I want us to continue. But as we continue in this field, I want us to remember that we're the creators, we're the builders, we're the makers, and we're the ones who are gonna be maintaining them, fueling them, controlling them. We can't allow artificial intelligence to control us or determine our live paths. Thank you. Thank you.